Hi everyone and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this lecture we're going to talk about sets. Sets is a new data structure that we're going to be seeing. So what is a set? It's very different to queues or stacks or lists and as we'll see they're not built upon any of those. A set is just a container for data and it has some very interesting properties. There cannot be duplicate data. If you want to add, for example, the same number twice, it just won't be added. It can only contain one of the unique elements. And there are some operations that make sets very useful in some scenarios, as we will see. Let's say we have these two sets, which are depicted as circles in this diagram. There is a square around them, and the square around them is all the elements that are inside the um, that are in not in either of these sets. So let me explain. Let's say we have fifteen students doing art and thirteen doing biology, and then ten that are doing neither. Those ten are all those students that are not in those two sets, or any other set that could be within the universal set, which is the square. Now, if we join them together, then now we have twelve doing art. 3 doing art, 10 doing biology, and 3 doing biology. So in total, it's the same as before, 15 and 13, and 15 and 13. But 3 of them are doing both art and biology. So actually, you have 3 students less, because previously you had 15 plus 13, and now you have 12, 3, and 10, which is 3 less. And this is because there is three students that are doing both art and biology, so they are shared amongst both Venn diagrams. Uh, sorry, both sets. Um, this notation for sets is called a Venn diagram. That's why I called it that. So what things can a set do? You can remove all, and this removes from the set that you're calling this method on all the elements present in the other collection, which could be a set or a list or something like that. So if you have a set with 15 students, and you remove all a different set that has 10 of those students, then your initial set will end up with 5 students. You'll see what, what this actually does in a bit once, once we've studied this a bit more in the next video when we actually get to program it. Retain all keeps in this set only the elements present in both this set and in the collection that you give us a parameter. So if you have two sets, each one with 5 numbers, and both of them have two numbers that are the same, and you call retain all in one of them and give the other set as a parameter, then the set you call retain all in ends up with two numbers. So as you can see, sets are kind of complicated. The elements in them are stored without an order, so you don't have to worry about ordering them. Every time you print the set out, it will be in a different order. And instead of programming our own sets, we can use Java's built-in set class, which is awesome because that means we save some hours of some work. So we will need some classes to import. We need to import set and hash set. Just like list and array list, set is the interface that um, that hash set comes from. So you don't directly create a set. Uh, you create a hash set that comes from a set. And you decide what you're going to store in them and then the two brackets at the end and you can add things. It's very similar in terms of syntax to the queue. Sorry, to the list. Let's try to make a lottery, and I'm th I'm sure this will explain the set fully in a lot more uh, detail that I haven't really been able to explain with just words. We need to create a set of numbers for a user. For example, if you pick five numbers, then we create a set and put those five numbers in it. And then create a random set of numbers and put them into a set. So we would have the five numbers of our user and a random five numbers in a different set. And then we'll get our set and retain all the elements that are present in both our set and the lottery set. This way, our set would only end up with those numbers that match the lottery. And depending on how many numbers we got right, we'll win different amounts of money. Let me show you a graphical example that I'm sure will help you understand a bit better. Let's say we have our six numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine, and 10, and we have the lottery numbers. 2, 4, 6, 8, 11, and 12. As you can see, 
no two numbers match in here. Let's change it so that some numbers match. We're going to make 7, 9, and 10 appear here instead of 6, 8, and 12. So there we have it. Now our user has 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. And the lottery has 2, 4, 7, 9, 10, and 11. So this means our user has three numbers that match with the lottery. If we got this user set and called retain all with a lottery set, our user set would end up with only these three numbers. The lottery set would remain unchanged. So we'll create a lottery class and it will have the methods up that come. Create user numbers. We will ask the user for six numbers and put them in a set. And then create lottery numbers, which will calculate the six number numbers and put them in a different set. And then a method called user winnings will compare the user and the random sets to check how much money the user has won. So we'll essentially get our user numbers, call retain all with the lottery set, and then check the number of items left in our in our user set and then print out the winnings. So something like this. This is our lottery class, and we have our create user numbers method that will create a hash set and we'll return it. We'll have a different method to create the lottery numbers and we'll return a hash set. And then we'll have a method to compare uh, compare the two sets that we create and check the winnings. So how this will work is that the user winnings will call these two methods and will get the user set that is returned and the lottery set that is returned from these methods and compare them inside this method. So in the next video, we will implement this lottery using sets. But you can try to play around with sets before moving on. Try to import some sets and add some items and call retain all and, uh, and, and all those methods that you can find in sets. And try to see what the output is. Try to see if you can understand it fully. You can also check the document that will be... Um, on the right of this video, which will be um, a document you can download and that should have an assignment uh, that you can try to do with sets. So stick with me and let's go into the next video once you finish with that and we'll try to implement some sets.